Martin, can you hear me? Okay. May we open our service this morning by turning to hymn number 104. Number 104, we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4, standing as we sing. Gracious Lord, our loving and eternal Heavenly Father, how we thank you for your love that um, surpasses anything that we could ever describe, a love which began even before the creation of the world and continues to this very day, a love which caused you to send forth your Son to be our Redeemer a love which reaches out to embrace each and every one, even to this very day. Lord God, we, we yearn to return to that love with hearts that are open and ready to be filled to the overflowing with just the awareness of uh, how great you are and how much you love us. May your Holy Spirit fill our hearts this morning and pour out an abundant measure of the love of God into our hearts. God, as we look at our world today, even as we look at our nation, we see a people who are wounded and divided and deeply hurt. And Father, we know that only your grace and your mercy and your loving kindness can heal those wounds and those hurts. Only you can bring us uh, back together. And so we appeal to you God, help us, bring us back to repentance, bring us back to your feet and to your throne that we may kneel there, bow in your presence and worship you. Touch our hearts, we pray, in a very special way as we open your word today 
and as we worship you, the King of kings and Lord of lords. So we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm going to let you go right ahead and greet one another. It's good to see you here this morning. Take a moment and shake a hand nearby. Tell them you're glad to see them. All right, may we continue our worship by turning to hymn number 768. Number 768, we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. When my life work is ended and I cross the swirling tide, when the bright and glorious morning I shall see, I shall know my Redeemer when I reach the other side, and His smile will be the first to welcome me. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, and redeemed by His side I shall st <coughs> oh, Him, I shall know Him, by the prints of the nails in His hand. Oh, the soul-thrilling rapture when I view his blessed face and the luster of his kindly beaming eye. How my full heart will praise him for the mercy, love, and grace that prepare for me a mansion in the sky. I shall know him, I shall know him, and redeemed by his side I shall stand. I shall know him, I shall know him By the prints of the nails in his hand Through the gates to the city In a robe of spotless white He will lead me where no fears will ever fall In the glad song of angels I shall mingle with delight But I long to reach my Savior first of all I shall know him, I shall know him, and redeemed by his side I shall stand. I shall know him, I shall know him, by the prints of the nails in his hand. 
And now may we turn to hymn number 753, 753 verses 1, 2, and 3. Marvelous message we bring, glorious carol we sing, wonderful word of the King, Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again, maybe morning, maybe Jesus is coming again, forest and flower exclaim, mountain and meadow the same, all earth and heaven proclaim, Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again. is coming again, standing before him at last, burn in trouble all past, crowns at his feet we will cast, Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again. You. you may be seated. That's a blessed truth. One day he's coming again. I'd like to read this morning from Second Thessalonians chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it, is, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you, and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God, and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness 
and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. May we turn again in our hymnals to hymn number 759. Number 759, we'll sing all three verses. Jesus is coming to earth again. What if it were today? Coming in power and love to reign. What if it were today? Coming to claim his chosen bride. All the redeemed and purified. Over the home with benefit wide. What if it were today? Glory, glory, joy to my heart will bring. Glory, glory, when we will crown him king. Glory, glory, haste to prepare the way. Jesus will come today. His dominion will then be o'er. Oh, that it were today. Sorrow and sighing shall be no more. Oh, that it were today. Then shall the dead in Christ arise. Caught up to meet him in the skies. When shall these glories meet our eyes? What if it were today? Glory, glory, joy to my heart will bring. Glory, glory, when we shall crown him king. Glory, glory, haste to prepare and true would he find us here if he should come today watching in gladness and not in fear if he should come today signs of his coming multiply morning light breaks in eastern sky watch for the time is drawing nigh what if it were today glory glory joy to my heart will bring glory glory when we shall crown him king glory to prepare the way. Glory, glory, when Jesus will come someday. And then for our last hymn, let's turn to hymn number 757. 757, we'll sing all three verses. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. 
no more dying there We are going to see the King No more dying there We are going to see the King No more dying there We are going to see the King Hallelujah, hallelujah We're going to see the King Thank you, ladies. That was very inspiring. I appreciate that. Does anybody remember a pastor named Aaron Reed? Some of you were here during that time. All right. Aaron uh, invited me to come to First Baptist Heart and do a winter Bible study on the book of Genesis. Anybody remember that? No, you don't remember. <laughs> you wouldn't remember something like that. Well, here we are, done another winter Bible study at First Baptist Heart on the book of Malachi. So, done Genesis, and here we are at Malachi. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm glad to be able to be with you and to be sharing this uh, Bible study with you today. Um, the notes for this particular part will not be found in that handout sheet I gave you. Uh, it's not there. They will be found just a bare bones outline in your bullets and inserts. So that's where you need to look if you want to take any notes on that. We're going to do uh, Malachi chapter 4 during this session, and then we'll go back and pick up where we left off uh, during the Sunday school hour after lunch. But if you have your Bible there, we'll open it together. Let's read uh, chapter 4. It's a short chapter. This is Malachi chapter 4. <clears throat> Surely the day is coming, it will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. And that day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. And you will go out and leap like calves released from the stall. Then you will trample down the wicked, and they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I do these things, says the Lord Almighty. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. See, I will send you the prophet Elijah before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers or else I will come and strike the land with a curse. And let's pray for a moment. 
Father, we have um, talked about all of our days, uh, that day of your coming again. We do not know when it is. You said it would come suddenly, unexpectedly. It would come with judgment. It would come with joy, <clears throat> depending on how we were prepared for that day. As we look at this scripture this morning, Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit may lend us wisdom, may reveal your truth to our hearts, and help us to live and act accordingly, that we might honor your name and share your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> the day of the Lord. It's one of the most important principles of the Old Testament prophets. That very expression, the day of the Lord, is found 39, no, 29 times in the Old Testament. But there are other similar type expressions like that day or the day that is coming or the last day or we sometimes say judgment day. We look for it expectantly as the day of our Lord's return but for the saints of the Old Covenant, the Old Testament was clearly a day when God was going to come and vindicate Him.